All right, guys, welcome back. Thanks for thanks for watching. And to today, this is gonna be this is a big one. We are going to be making this sweet set of uh of uh, Warhammer 40k Space Wolves Blood Claws, including a little little leader, including a guy with a power fist. So we're gonna go through. We're gonna model each and every one of these. We're gonna import some files that are uh, that are pulled from Dawn of War 2. We've got um, I've got a Dropbox that'll have a link in the description so that you can download all of the source files that you'll need. Um, we're gonna install. We're gonna download all of them. We have them all rigged up and everything. I'm gonna show you guys how to make an IK rig to make kind of posing them easier. We're gonna go through. We're gonna customize each of them. We're gonna take parts from some other pieces. And we're going to uh, use that to kind of take the regular, regular old Space Marines and kind of make them, you know, extra wolfy, extra, extra Space Wolfy. Um, and once we've got all that, we're going to combine them. We're going to combine all the textures. We're going to set up the models, and then we're going to import them back into Tabletop Simulator. So get ready, because this one's this one's going to be a big one. But I think you guys will be really happy you checked it out. So let's get started. All right, so um, for all of the files that we will be pulling from Tabletop Simulator for this whole project, we're going to pull all of these for a majority of the assets that we're going to get just to kind of take the regular Space Marine models and try to get more, you know, more kind of more of a Space Wolves sort of feel out of them. So we're going to pull like his cape to use probably as like kind of like a sash or something um all of the files that we're going to be using will be ooh, will be will be um all basically we're going to use this this is just from games workshop we're going to use this kind of image as our inspiration so i'm probably going to pull this guy's helmet here i'm going to pull um, try to get, you know, some hair for some characters similar to this. Not quite so, you know, weird and flared out, but we'll get, like, these kind of furry sashes and the tail thing. Maybe try to get that onto one of the helmets. Um, and try to get the sort of color scheme, the way it, you know, the way it looks correct for the Space Marines. So, um, to do that, we're going to use all of these models here. And for the heads, I'm going to use these two possibly not be using all of them i'm going to use one of the heads from one of the or some of the heads from these guys maybe maybe this guy with the mohawk and adjust his skin pigment to make him look a little less pale um and for the actual 3d models i'm going to take these these are dawn of war 2 models i don't i tried to track down who originally did it because an awesome thing that they did was that they not only got those models but they also did this really cool thing where they basically made these um they basically took all of the texture files from dawn of war 2 and set them up so that you can actually recolor them really really easy so we'll be able to color match the uh the space wolves really quick and easy that way so should be should be a good time so this is where all these these models actually came from we're not going to be using all of them i just wanted to bring them all in first thing just so that you can kind of see what it is we're working with um i have all their weapons here they're all kind of existing on the same area but we're going to use the chain sword for all the guys with the base stuff they're going to have a chain sword and a bolt pistol maybe we'll have like one guy with a plasma pistol and we'll have one of the uh Oh, one of the the leaders. Oh, pack leader. I, I can't remember what what they're called off the top of my head, but the uh, the leader we're gonna have him have one of the power axes, and then we'll also just have some knives if we want to throw a knife on somebody just to kind of vary it up. I've also got the heads from all the Dawn of War ca uh, characters as well. It all looks very weird right now because they are all up at the same time so it, it looks off right now but we'll actually we'll get all that organized but I just want to show you guys what like if you if you come into this that's what you're gonna be looking at first thing 
So the first thing I'm going to do is turn on screencast so that that way you guys can see what it is I'm doing. A lot of the stuff, yeah, like a lot of the stuff we're not going to use might use the power fist too because that's an option. So what the heck, we'll give someone a power fist. So let's let's get started on it though. Um, first thing I'm going to do since I've already got all these imported, and you'll be starting with the same base file. I'll, I'll upload that for you guys. So the next big thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to take all of this, move it over, so we've got an empty space right here. And I'm going to switch this over to Cycles Render. And we're going to go through the kind of tedious process of taking all of these models. So I did this in my last video, but we're going to real quick just do it in this one. I'll just show you once, and then we'll speed through the rest of them. Just right click on the model, click Custom. And then right here we'll have the, uh, the 3D object file. So we're going to want to get that, and we're also going to want to get the diffuse image file. So just control C to copy, go into your web browser, just drop it in. And it's just going to download it right there. And we're going to go into our base where we are actually going to have all of our, all of our files. Make a new folder. I'm just going to do TTS models and we'll use that for all of our models for tabletop simulator. So now we've got this empty space here. It's great. Pull that up one more time. Control X just to cut it and Control V to paste it. Sorry if my computer seems to be running a little slow, mostly with running Camtasia, running my recording software, running Blender, Tabletop Simulator all at the same time. It kind of bogs it down a little bit, but it all should work. And then we're going to go back into Tabletop Simulator, copy the image file, just Control C, Control V. And we're just going to save that to that same that same folder. And I'm just going to make a new folder inside there just for textures. Make it a little bit easier. Just call it Goblin Hunter. There we go. Did I put it in the right spot? I don't think I did. Nope. We'll just drag that in. And that's basically all we're going to do with the rest of these. So I'm just going to go down the line and get that started. I'll have links to all of the, the mod files as well so that you guys can pull those up too. And then we'll be back. Alright, and real quick, just to make sure you guys know what's going on here, if you open up this guy, this one's in a, a paste, paste.ee um, on the webpage, which when somebody does this for a long time before you could upload it, upload your files to, uh, to your Steam cloud, you, um, you would basically always have to host them online. I would always do it this way um, because it was really easy to get them up there and you could keep them up, them up there like permanently and you just didn't have to worry about it. So the only problem with it is when you put that in, it'll do this. And you might be looking and be like, what the heck? Um, basically, it's just the 3D object has been converted into a text file. So I'm just going to click and drag on the top and then get to the bottom, hold down shift, click Control C to copy it. And we're just going to I'm just gonna hit Windows. We're gonna open up Notepad. This is a little weird, but you just go there. Control V, paste it in. And now we're just going to go into where we 
where we're saving that file. just call it I'm gonna call it red hair because that's what I really care about is that he has red hair close it out and now you just go over here there's the file and it's a .txt just change it to .obj it's gonna be like hey you sure you want to do that yeah you do and now you're all set with it it'll open exactly the same it should work just fine All right, now we've got all of those, all of those saved. So now we are all set to actually import those images or those 3D models. So it's just going to take just a minute. We'll just run run through the first one, and then from there, we'll kind of go. We'll just kind of, I'll, I'll just speed through it so that that way we can kind of get onto the fun stuff. So we're just going to go in there and just start with. Start with the first one. There's a little guy there, but and since it's facing the wrong way, um, we're just gonna rotate on the z-axis, so it'll just spin him. 180. There we go. Now he's facing the right way. And you can see also, in comparison to the other models, he's very small. So we're just going to. I'm just going to select everything on that first layer. There we go. And we're just going to scale them up. Try to get them about to the same size as the rest of them. I'm going to go into edit mode, drag it so that is origin. A little orange dot there is right at his feet. Bring that back down. There we go. That way when we scale him, should scale more right. And his proportions you can see are a little different. Really all that matters is his head. But that'll do it. Let's move it to another layer. Just get it out of the way there. And continue on. So we're going to import all of those 3D objects the exact same way. And then we'll be and then I'll be back in just a minute. All right, so now we've got them all set up and we've got them all moved to separate layers. If you guys get stuck on any of this, just try to follow the screencast or like if you have to move it to a layer like any of these layers down here you just select what you need to move hit M and then you just click on the layer you want to move it to so it should be not too bad um, and also if you guys want to check out some of this kind of more introductory stuff I do have a another video that's kind of on a little bit more of the basics of kind of this this sort of kit bashing sort of stuff so the more advanced stuff we're going to try to dig into here, but um, but the basics are all right there. So now we're going to with this with this setup since they're also I mean they're you know they're supposed to be the you know the blood claws so they're supposed to be like the the newbies you know the initiates all of that so we're not going to worry we're not going to give them like really you know epic equipment or anything like that. We're just going to kind of give them the real, you know, the sort of like basics in terms of armor and all of that stuff. So let's go through here and check it out. There's like the commander armor. And sometimes I'll just go through and kind of look at it and be like, is this what I'm looking for? We're still kind of eyeballing it because we don't have any of the, the texture files put on there yet. But um, we're not going to put all of them on there because it'd just be a waste of time. So... This one, obviously, is going to be more ornate than we're looking for, so we're just going to delete it. Grab the next one. Pull it out. That might be closer. The rare might be good, because I think with the rare armor, 
you know how the space wolves have a lot of have kind of a change in terms of color between their the bands on their shoulders and the actual center and everything so we might we might end up wanting to go wanting to go that route so I'm gonna save that one and that'll be kind of like worth taking the time to actually grab it this extra stuff we don't need for this I'm gonna keep this all on the source file because that way if you guys want to use any of this stuff to do any of your other stuff I'm gonna get rid of all the purity seals and all of that um because we want to play up that they're space wolves you know so we're just gonna keep running down the line that one I'm gonna get rid of it the common I'm gonna keep out epic we don't need that so it looks like we just have those two now which is what we're kind of looking for we're gonna keep the power fist because we're gonna use that um some other stuff that we're gonna real quick and before I forget let's just save this as save this just to make sure I don't lose it there we go awesome so the banner we're not gonna be using the banner iron halo we're not gonna be using that the jump pack we can delete that Now the backpack with the teleporter, we're not gonna need that. There are a couple of a couple of different uh different backpacks. This one's the Force Commander backpack, which I think is just a little fancier. We're gonna just chuck that too, because we still don't want them to be too fancy looking. It's easy for that to get out of control. And all the weapons we're gonna keep exactly where they are. I'm just gonna save again while I'm thinking about it cool but now we've got kind of the basics of stuff that we're going to want to hold on to the only other thing is in terms of the helmets I'm gonna save this is the sergeant helmet that's gonna be a little more fancy so we're gonna get rid of that this is the regular assault helmet so we're gonna keep that I'm gonna move the helmets to their own layer just to this is the regular helm, so we're going to keep that one. This is another sergeant helm, so we're going to get rid of that. Cool. And you can just hold shift to look at multiple layers at the same time. So if you want to see how they look with weapons or something, just do something like that. So there we go. I'm going to take the helmets now that we've got that sorted out. Move them back to that layer. And things are starting to look good. They're starting to come together. Um... So now, oh, we don't need, don't need that. And we don't need that. Awesome. So now we should be, we should be set up to actually get this stuff started. So, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to actually build an IK rig out of this basic rig that is you know kind of the standard rig that is used for um for like the uh gary's mod source filmmaker um kind of the valve valve specific stuff this kind of skeleton is usually it's kind of good to get used to kind of dealing with these especially since so many of them are going to be you know there's so much stuff out there for the source filmmaker stuff and everything so um, and in its basic way, we could work with it. You know, we could just pose the character out this way. But we're going to add an IK rig for it, which will just kind of give us a little more control on everything. So we're going to go into edit mode. And actually, before I do that, I'm just going to just be looking at this. And we are going to start taking... We're going to click on these little tiny bones here. Just click on the outside one on each of them. And we're going to go into the hands. We're going to do the same thing. Just click on... That power fist always throws me off, though. There we go. Yeah, that should be right. Cool. So now we've got all those. I'm going to hit three. Just look to the side. Then extrude on the Y-axis. And just bring those out. So now we've got these four bones right there nice thing with doing that is now 
So now these are going to be actually, when we're actually posing the character, we're not going to be moving their hands nearly as much or their legs. We're just going to be moving these little guys. And the other thing I'm going to do, because it's so tiny, otherwise I'm just going to take this little bone in the center is kind of their core. It controls like if they're moving or whatever, like, or, you know, if you're moving the entire thing, which is really nice for kind of getting them to like, you know, turn to the side or anything like that. So we're just going to grab that and bring it out, bring it down, something like that. And that'll get us set up there. So now let's just name these bones. This is going to be left foot IK. Take this one, right foot IK. This one, left hand IK. And this one, right hand IK. Cool, so we've got that. Yikes, what happened there? how these these bones work they kind of drive me crazy I'm just gonna bring it in like there we go that'll be fine that way you can still see everything it's not this giant ball there are ways to work around that but but you know it's not something we need to go into and I'm definitely not the best person to teach on that. So, so now we've got our control bones set up, but now we just need to set up also the two things with the IK is having that control bone. And then also you need another object to basically tell it like, this is where the joints are gonna point. So you want one for each knee and then you want one for each elbow. So now we're back in object mode. We're gonna add in just a regular cube I'm going to scale it up just a little bit and bring it right there in front of the knee. Make sure it's actually in front of the knee, just like that. And we're going to name that one. We're just going to name that one left knee. Duplicate it, shift D, and then put one in front of the right knee. R underscore knee. Take both of these. Duplicate them again, bring them up. We'll look to the right, to the side, bring them behind the elbows. And we're just gonna grab each one, grab it on the X, grab it on the X, make sure to name them. And this is gonna be L elbow. And this one is going to be R. Elbow. There it is. Awesome. So now we are set up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually go into pose mode. We're going to take the wrist bone, click over here to the bone constraint tab, and the pull down menu, just choose inverse kinematics. So first is going to be the target. The target is going to be. Do, 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 do. I have way too many groups now. What a fiasco. Let's uh let's get out of here for a second. That is too many groups. Just hit uh, we'll select everything control J just to make sure we're we're gonna try to join these in all to one because some of them are like like this one every little mustache thing is a separate thing and that's just that's just a nightmare it's just filling up our workspace it's awful no thanks make sure they're all joined just hitting a to select everything control J to merge everything on that layer all right. all right cool and let's see 
let's just let's just run through real quick and rename this. It's gonna be red hair. When you select them, it'll also show down there where it is, what Larry's on. Black hair. And this one's just going to be called one axe. A lot of these models, we're not necessarily going to use every one of them, but ju I'm just kind of showing you guys the way I work. And usually when I'm trying to put together something cool like this, um, then usually I, I really prefer to kind of have access to all of it, you know, just kind of get everything that I think might work for it and kind of figure out, you know, what, what I'm looking to do from there. So now we've got that cleaned up a little bit. That should make it a lot, a lot easier to actually build the IK. So now you can see a lot less stuff. So we're going to want the, uh, the skeleton of the Space Marine skeleton. And we're going to want the left hand IK we're on the left hand right now the pull target is going to be left elbow and you see everything freaks out but not to worry we just need to ch adjust the chain length one two and three and that way it's going to do between the elbow and the hand it's gonna use the ik oh and one more thing that we have to do we're going to go back into edit mode you know, take each of these the IK bones and delete their parents because they don't need them. There we go. Now back into pose mode. And there you can see it's it's doing doing what you want it to do. You just want it to basically move you want it to just kind of make the uh, the elbow just kind of make way for the rest of the hand, and that's going to make it a ton easier when we get into actually modeling and everything. So now we've got we've got that one done. We're just going to go through, do the same thing for the other the other wrist, and then also for the other ankle bones there. Then we'll just go in there, grab that. Grab the skeleton, the right hand IK, pull target is going to be our elbow. It's going to freak out for a second. Set the chain length to three. And I usually just like checking it real quick just to make sure. But it looks like it's doing just fine. And see so then this is gonna be left side so it's not gonna be the left knee it's gonna be the skeleton and then the left foot IK there it is left knee for the pole target chain length set to three there it is awesome and one thing that you will notice with this one, some, you'll still need to do some tweaking on the actual bones to get it sorted out. But um, this one, I think, is a really, you know, easy to understand, uh, quick and dirty IK rig. I've se I know that there, there are some other people who do a much more kind of thorough like IK rig tutorial. Um, I know when I was learning, I got, I got real really infuriated by them though too so oh and we didn't mean to uh didn't want to have it on on the actual ik we want it over here on the uh on the ankle bone because it doesn't do much good to set up an ik 
to use itself. And we are on the right foot, so we're going to grab that. Awesome. Just gonna save it again real quick. And so now it should do a good job. And so when we actually have the, the model up, you can see it'll do the same thing. Cool thing now too, is you bring the L, like you bring the base down and everything else will just adjust to it, which is gonna be really nice when we're kinda like making it kinda look like they're crouching or they're lunging or whatever, you know. It should work really, really well, so. So I think we'll be really happy with that. The next thing we're just going to want to do is we're going to want to take each of these and we're just going to parent them to the skeleton root bone. That way, when we rotate this, we want the IK's controls to rotate. We also want the pole targets to rotate. So we're going to have to set... We're gonna have to set both of these, both of these bones. Remember how I said they didn't need a parent? They actually do, the, the skeleton root parent. That way they'll all rotate together. Awesome. And for this one, we're just going to have to actually go in, we'll select the skeleton first, tell it that we want to do a bone. I want to do the skeleton root bone. And it's going to it's going to act up for a second. But just bring it back in where the the exact uh, like location of the pole target. We're going to be tweaking that anyway. So don't worry about it that it kind of jumps around a little bit. Just put it back where it needs to be. And just continue continue down the line. These elbows need to come out. Yeah, you just don't want to get them lost because that's a nightmare. And we're going to just select the skeleton again. And one more time. So now these are all set to go. So next, the next big thing that we'll do is we can go through and start assigning some textures. We'll get kind of our, you know, kind of stuff figured out and then we'll kind of add in our embellishments from there and see, see what we're doing. Um, and, and then we'll, we'll kind of, you know, we'll get it exported, get them posed up, you know, export the files and drop them into tabletop simulator so next step we are just going to start adding in their textures so you just click down here we're going to open up a new window and go into the node editor hit tnn to make sure they're just all cleared out and we're just going to follow these these textures here we're going to start with just the stock textures because we don't know what we're actually going to need we don't know what we're going to want to change so there's no reason to make a bunch of changes that don't serve any purpose so just click on use nodes there shift a add an input or actually i'm sorry add a add a texture image texture i drag that in you won't see any change we're going to go down here right now it's showing just the solid viewport we're going to switch it to texture And now we're just going to go and open the file. Just navigate to where you have all of those textures. I'm going to go to the marine base. And I'm going to start with the Blood Ravens one. And I already forgot, it's the Power Armor Common Diffuse. There we go. 
how armor common diffuse? There it is. Oh, yikes. Oh, I picked the scout armor. That's not going to help. Power armor common diffuse. There it is. Nice. And his bones are being weird, but that's not that's not a real problem. That's just because we're moving the 3D model without moving the skeleton. So, and we're going to do that the same with the power armor rare. This power armor rare, there it is. Cool. And do the backpack. There it is. We'll do the power fist because we're going to actually, yeah, we're going to outfit one with the power fist. So we're going to still want to keep that on there. Power fist common. There it is. We don't need that right now though. So I'm just going to hide that so that that way we can see everything pretty, pretty easily. And now we're at the assault marine head. There it is. And I'm just going to hide it as we're going along. And this is going to be the space marine head. Oop. If you accidentally drop a node into the wrong one, just hold down control, click, and just drag across it. That'll cut it. Awesome. So this should get us set up with those. And let's go through. We'll also do that with the uh, with the weapons. And then we'll do that with all of our downloaded files. These are all going to be in the generic folder. that knife common there we go that's power axe common there it is and I'm excited for this one I think we'll take a We'll do some cool stuff so that we can kind of make it look a little more, a little more space wolvesy. Maybe put some runes on it or something would be pretty sweet. So we'll see what happens with that. Should be neat though. Do the bolt pistol. And we'll do the plasma pistol. Now, if you run into a problem with the with the plasma pistol, where the where the flip is it? Hmm. Oh, I know what it is. Real quick, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna fix that. All right, now we're back. Cool. Yeah, it was just that uh, I have my where I keep all of my stuff for my own things and I remembered to transfer the plasma pistol diffuse file over there, but then I forgot to do it when I was uh, when I was getting this file set up. So now we've got it and it's all sorted out. We might end up having to move some stuff around as we work, but we will see how it goes. Um, and from the here, now all we have to do we just have to do the same thing for um for our imported files so we're just gonna make the same nodes and everything and I'm just going to back up here to the tabletop simulator models and just drop it in and you can see there we go 
everything looks very jagged when you're doing stuff in a, a tabletop simulator. You can just change it if, if you want to. Change the shading to smooth. And I thought it would do it. Doesn't look like it's doing it. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be having much of an effect. But that's neither here nor there. It will look just like it does in here when you actually get it imported. So I, so don't don't stress too much about whether or not it's jagged or smooth shading, um, because that'll all that'll all work out. And we're just gonna go through and do that for the rest of it, and then we'll be right back. Alright, and now we've got them all imported, and so all of the textures should be good, so we can kind of pick and choose what we want from each of them. So this should be pretty nice here. So I've got this file here with all of my heads. So the first thing that we're going to do is the guys whose heads we're using. We're just going to go through, pick them up. I'm just using L to select the different parts that I want. And this one is a little weird with how it works, but it will do the job. And I'm just going to... There we go. And I'm just going to box select some of this stuff on top and then just hit plus. There we go. Until we've got a lot of it selected. Make sure you grab like his chin. You don't want to forget that. Switch your selection mode as you need to to make sure you get everything. These, um, some of these game models are like have a ton of stuff just separated out but there we go so now I've got his whole head hit P to separate by selection and now we've got it so we're just gonna move that move that to the head layer there we go and we might end up having to kind of move his you know his crazy crazy face stuff Oh, and I just realized I forgot to do. We're going to move the helmets out of the way here real quick. There we go. Let's get that on a, on a layer so we can, just so we can check these at the same time. Set the, uh, we're going to set the origin to the geometry. And... We just want to make his head kind of rotate to uh, so that he's just looking forward, looking up a little bit. Bring bring that out somewhat. Some of his we might end up just pulling, just getting rid of a lot of that beard and stuff. And his hair will probably do something with that's you know, and that's all providing that we actually decide this is the this is like the you know one of the ones that we're going to use a lot of it I'm just you know I'm just getting stuff worked out so we can we can give it a shot see see what kind of looks good see what doesn't work and just go from there this one's a lot higher res Which is, you know, which is nice, but it may end up kind of being a little bigger and, and clunkier than we than we want. I'm just using the brush select and just everything I can just to try to get his entire get his entire head on there. See a specially modeled nose hair. Or is that uh I think that might be like nose piercings or something. We'll just leave that on its own since 
I don't really think the, uh, I don't think Space Wolves would have, would have nose piercings, right? We'll just leave that where it is. He's also got some other little random bits. Look like it's kind of like an artifacting sort of problem more than anything else. So we're going to leave those as well. That kind of hair thing there doesn't look right either. So I'm just going to hold down Shift and L just to deselect that stuff. And if you accidentally hit the wrong thing, then just undo. There we go. Cool. Hit P. And we'll just separate that. Remove that up to that layer. Does that look all messed up? No, it looks it looks okay. I'm gonna see if oh yeah. Perfect. Awesome. And that way we can just kinda delete some of the stuff that we don't need. Set that origin. Rotate him a little bit. His face is looking kinda kinda mutated though. This might be one that we'll end up having to I like it. I mean I really do like how this head is shaped, but man, he is looking weird. Ah, man, yeah, he is looking really pretty deformed. I still might end up using it though, man. He looks, he he looks like a blood claw if ever I've seen one. I'm just gonna grab this, scale it, bring it down. There we go. Just to get his neck kind of connected there. That looks as goofy as it does great. Oh, that is a hard one. I don't know, I can't. I can't necessarily. That's gonna be hard to uh, to give up, in all honesty. Because I do like him, but man, it looks weird. I'm going to select his whole face. But that's why I like to work this way. Is we're just trying stuff. We'll see what, what kind of holds on as we go. This one's kind of a, this one's just layers upon layers. Just try to get to the, the angles that let you see everything. Some of these here too, you can see it's like doubled up like that, which is nice. Um, it lets you, uh, it, it at least lets you always make sure that. Oh, what is happening there? Looks like I accidentally somehow added some, dropped in some ad nodes, without intending to. looking that is that is looking pretty good looks like it's almost his entire head other than there we go that 
until you accidentally do that, but just hold shift and L. There you go. Sometimes with these, it's almost better to, uh, to just select everything and then deselect what you don't need, but that should work. Awesome. Just checking it against we're just gonna get the origin set to his geometry just kind of snaps it all into the center oh yeah he looks he looks like a leaderly sort though oh I like that guy that's cool and it doesn't, uh, maybe just scale it down just a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, he looks, he looks grizzly. I like it. Ooh, there we go. And we're just gonna... So we've just got a ton of faces in here. It looks looking a little weird so far, but and the nice thing is though too is even if this guy's mutated face doesn't end up working for us, we can probably drop some of his like his mohawk and stuff onto another model, you know, and kind of kind of get what we want from it. This one is honestly a ton similar. Eh, that's not gonna work. Just gonna select all of that real quick. Just kind of using the brush tool to try to get as much of this, as much of this stuff as I can. There's a lot with these. It's just layers, which does help it, especially with hair. It does having all those layers definitely does a lot to uh to help get it looking good but you also want to kind of keep in mind too is that you don't want to like you know say you're gonna if you're trying to play with other people you don't want to be the guy who's like okay here's my army it takes like a week and a half to load into tabletop simulator because i i took everything you know don't be that guy. Or at least, you know, if it's going to take forever, make sure it's like your really good model. It's not just, you know, it's not just your one of your 10 blood claw units. Like make sure it's like your HQ or something. People will get less mad if it takes takes a while for him to come in. And we left a few behind, but yeah, yeah, we're not going to worry about it. A lot of that gets tucked into, tucked in, you know, behind the, uh, the armor and everything, too, so. Should not be a problem. We're going to set that orange in to the geometry. We're going to get him into, into his place. Rotate his head a little bit. Let's compare it to... The other heads, it's looking. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like that one too, because he's looking kind of wild. Awesome. So the rest of these, we're just going to be pulling kind of select things to sort of zazz them up a little bit. Like this one, I'm going to be pulling his, his tail there. Um, we might use some of this stuff. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use any of his little face stuff. The bones, we're going to be, going to be making use of that on this one. And 
And this guy, I am honestly, when you compare him to the other heads that we have as an option right now, it just doesn't seem, just doesn't seem kind of worth doing. So I'm going to chuck him and just not, not worry about it. And the one thing we did forget to do, though, and by we, I mean I forgot to do it, is we just need to drop in the uh, Dawn of War heads that we've got here. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then we'll be back. All right, so now we've got them. We've got all of these set up. So we'll just kind of look through. And honestly, Gabriel isn't bad. I think if we, we we could consider him for like if we gave him like a big mustache, I could see that working. So we're gonna put him in the maybe pile. We're gonna take Thaddeus. Thaddeus is just too fancy. That's kind of the problem with a lot of the Dawn of War ones. The uh, the Blood Raven guys just look, for the most part, pretty fancy. Avidus is kind of a little, a little overly techy. Force Commander is just so handsome. Just can't can't stand it. Thule is, you know, he's pretty clean cut too. Tarkus though, Tarkus looks scary. And so we'll probably we'll take Tarkus. Um I'm definitely definitely gonna go with uh Tarkus for a head. So may uh maybe Gabriel. Definitely Tarkus. And then what are we and then we'll decide what we're gonna or we're going to pull from these here. So let's... First thing first. This guy's head is so... So warped and everything. That it's just not going to work for... It's just not going to work for anything. There we go. So we're just going to take his mustache and we're gonna take his mohawk and we're gonna separate that and I'm gonna put these on Tarkus's head it looks goofy right now but I'm hoping we can make it work with these on a one one by one basis I might need to go into edit mode a little bit grab some bits like that Actually, we don't want to do it connected because so much of this stuff is not connected. Well, we're just going to bring it in like that. Yeah, there we go. Get him some mustache. sweet new Turkus. He's got two materials, which, you know, we're going to have to, we're going to have to do some stuff all around to get all of that worked out. But that is probably going to have to do it for, for tonight, for 
this this installment and then we'll come back and we'll get the the rest of everything set up we'll start getting the colors set up we're gonna start uh you know making our individual our individual models for the units and should be able to get our entire squad kind of kind of sorted out from there so make sure to check back awesome bye